The process route allows you to dynamically choose a sub-process to execute at runtime based upon some document value. The routing rules are configured separately, which define the mapping between a given value and the sub-process to execute, as well as the interface for how the sub-process should behave, such as pass-through or not, and the number of expected return document paths. This feature can greatly reduce the configuration and maintenance effort when building processes that need to handle many different types of documents and therefore many different execution paths. However, additional upfront design and coordination is required to use this feature effectively. If your process needs only a few routes that are relatively static, using a process route may not be necessary. But if the process has many routes that are constantly changing, the extra design and configuration sophistication will pay off in the long run with respect to ongoing maintenance. The two key aspects that make process route different than a regular process call are the ability to dynamically determine which sub-process to execute based on some runtime criteria, and the ability to deploy the main and sub-processes independently. Process routes enable you to execute another process from within a process dynamically, based on a reference that is set at the runtime. The reference can be resolved based on some value, such as a document property, data profile, or an extension value. You can define multiple conditions and values in the process root shape, allowing for many different execution paths. The process root component manages those exception paths. The sub-processes that a process root calls are not statically defined at build time. The sub-processes and the process root itself can all be changed and deployed independently of the parent process. You can even build a new sub-process, update the process root to call that sub-process, and deploy the new sub-process and process root component without ever touching the parent process. Processes that contain a process root component cannot be published to the process library. They also cannot be made available to managed accounts as part of an integration pack, and they cannot be deployed as a unit via the API. Process root components and the sub-processes that they call are not dependent components of the parent process that calls them. The parent process, the process root component, and all of the sub-processes must be deployed independently. This independent deployment can be a benefit, but it can also be a challenge. Independent deployment enables you to create a new sub-process or modify an existing sub-process without having to redeploy the parent process or any other sub-processes. Narrowing the deployment process to just the process root component and the affected sub-processes can have a positive impact on time to production. Change management procedures typically require testing anything that's modified but limiting the modifications to a sub-process or even the process root component and a new sub-process can significantly reduce the amount of testing that's required. However, independent deployment also means that you must remember to deploy the process root component and any affected sub-processes each time they're updated. Deploying the parent process does not deploy the process root and its sub-processes. And because there's no dependency between parent process and sub-process, it is possible to have different versions of the same component being used in different processes. Any changes that you make to common components must be backwards compatible. Be sure to coordinate the deployments of the parent process, 
the process root component, the subprocesses, and any dependent components. If you need to modify a subprocess that is called by a process root, you need to redeploy only that subprocess. You do not need to modify or redeploy the parent process or the process root component. However, any changes that you make to the subprocess must be compatible with the overall design of the parent process. If you need to add a new root and subprocess to the process root, you need to create and deploy the new subprocess. You also need to update and redeploy the process root component. You do not need to modify or redeploy the parent process. If you want to change common logic in the parent process, such as error handling, you need to modify and redeploy only the parent process. You do not need to modify or redeploy the subprocesses or the process root component. However, any changes that you make to the parent process must be compatible with the design of the subprocesses. To create a process root component, on the Build tab, create a new component and provide a descriptive name. On the General tab, turn the pass-through checkbox on or off to identify the type of subprocess being called. If on, documents are passed through to a subprocess for further processing. You can optionally add a return path to add one or more unique return paths. Atomsphere populates the path name field with a default path name. But if you specify your own path name, Atomsphere will validate the name as you type. The order in which you define return paths in this component does not affect the order in which they will be executed. The process root shape that calls the process root will control the return path execution sequence. If you do not define any return paths, subprocesses called by this component are not expected to return data. Whether or not you define any return paths, the process root establishes a default path. If a document does not match any of the specified root keys, it is routed down the default path. You can decide what the next step in the default path should be, such as a notify shape, or leave it undefined. The default path is always executed last. On the Process Routing tab, add keys to define one or more unique root keys to be used at runtime as the basis for determining which subprocess to call. Atomsphere will populate the route key field with a default key name. If you specify your own key name, Atomsphere will validate as you type. The keys that you specify should correspond to the root parameters you defined in a process root shape. Each key must be unique within the process root component. If you define a return path under general configuration because you expect the subprocess being called to return data, then you must also use the return path mapping section to map the return path to a return document shape in the subprocess being called. If the process root shape that is routed by a process root calls a process a pass through process, then incoming documents are grouped by process route key. The process associated with that key as defined in the process root component, is called once for all documents that match the key. If the process being called is not a pass-through process, then the process root shape is executed once 
for each document that reaches it. The process root shape that is routed by a processing group must call a pass-through process. Incoming documents are grouped by either partners or documents. If all trading partners use a standard structure, then the, then the routes should be structured on documents. The few partners that do not use a standard document format could call a different process. If the documents do not use a standard structure, then the routes should be structured on partners. When the route is structured on partners, individual trading partners can be set to use their own process and individual document standards and document types can be set to use other processes instead of the default. The General Settings tab also allows you to define options and the return path execution sequence. The root parameters tab is where you specify the parameter types and the values that are the basis for process routing. The parameter values that you specify are combined to become the route key in the process root component. Route keys are used to determine which subprocess to call. To deploy a process root component on the deploy tab, Deploy and attach to the desired environment and atom the main process. Deploy all subprocesses referenced in the process route. Switch the component type list to process root and then deploy the process root component. Documents will be routed to a single path only. Duplicate and wildcard keys are not allowed, so documents cannot match to multiple paths. Documents are first grouped together by root key, and then each group of documents is sent to the respective subprocess in the sequence defined within the process root component. Return paths are executed in the sequence defined in the process root shape, not in the component. The default path for documents that do not match a root key is executed last. Process root subprocess executions behave the same as regular process call exception, executions with respect to process reporting, Pass-through subprocesses are logged as a continuation of the main process, and there is not a separate execution record. Non-pass-through subprocesses will create a separate execution record. The execution context is shared, so things like process properties and document caches are available and can be modified between the main process and the subprocess. To learn more about the process route, visit the Dell Boomi community, enter the Knowledge Center, and then read the article, How to Use the Process Route Shape and Component.